coming Saturday. You don't want to miss it. Now we, you, you, I know some of you have gone and bought some of the videos already off the table, so you don't have to come out here. But we got one that you haven't seen that you don't have. We're going to show that. That's, that's very, very interesting because it's going to show you in there how Barack Hussein Obama purposely lied to the American people where it comes to uh, sodomy, or he said before he ran as he was running, how his position was he believed the marriage between a man and a woman, how he was saying that, well it shows you at the same time he's telling us that, how he's talking with a homosexual saying, you get me elected and the first thing I'll do, boom, it's going to be sodomy. So we have that in a film. Also, some of you might have heard the little sound like the little that uh, we played the other night about uh, Barack, so Barack talking about funding ISIS. ISIL. All right. We're gonna we're gonna continue to pray, play that too. Anyhow, so but you you want to come to this here? That's going to be on the Phil Fest Saturday. Starts at one. It probably going to go to about seven by the time we get them all played off. Joe Marshall from the Gospel Scenes. Gospel signs. Okay. <laughs> what do I tell him? Gospel signs. Anyhow, he's going to be. That's the fellow that's got those signs that which you see all over this place. He's the people that make them. He's going to be here in the morning. He's going to be out of court in the evening. He's going to bring a bunch of signs with him out there. Signs for you folks. You put in your yard, like we have over on my garage. You see them all over the garage. We have the big signs, and I like the ones that's here in the. The entrance way, but he's going to have the smaller ones like we use out of the abortion mills out there, and uh, they're free. He doesn't even charge you for them. He's just going to bring them out to give them taste, just so you put them out in your yard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So anyhow. Uh, garage sales, July 28th and uh, 29th and 30th. So 28th is a setup day. 28th is a setup day. Oh, so we need all the help we can get on that setup day. We really do need all the help. It starts at about uh, 9 in the morning. And then, uh, well, you can pick up, you can really pick up some bargains. How many of you here have really picked up some bargains at that garage sale? Yeah. Okay, I tell you, I really picked up some bargain. Come for breakfast first if they want. Yeah, you can come here for breakfast first if they want. Yeah, and you get a good breakfast, and then we help you to become doers of the word. So we put you to work. Okay. Meals on wheels. Yeah. Peggy's here now. Peggy and I are working on a way of making you back there a real hardcore activist. Okay. He's gonna. He's going to be the pro-life version of a Muslim suicide bomber. <laughs> we're trying to figure out, but we're, we're, we're getting close. So, anyhow, and of course, if he's doing it, of course, Matt will have to go along with him. Yeah. Those two are inseparable. So, speaking of that, I got me a pretty good Father's Day present. Matt! Went and he stained the entire decks. Have you all been to my house? You know how many decks we have around that house? Wow. He did them all. Wow. He did them all. Wow. So, yeah. So, uh, I guess that's all the announcements, right? Uh, graduation next. Next Saturday. We don't have anybody graduate. We have commencement. Commencement exercises next week. We got some people that are very close. So the following year, we're going to have a lot of graduates. A lot of people graduate. But, but next week, we'll be giving commencement and certificates for those folks that attend Kingsworth School of the Bible. And if everything works out right, like I hope it will, I'll be teaching here this coming uh, September uh, with the Bible and current events classes. So. So I won't have to go all the way to Cortland out there. I've got another man, Hal, who is uh, teaching that class out there, which is working out pretty good. That that church is growing out there. They, uh, every week we get more and more people coming out. So 
Hopefully pretty soon. We'll have more people there than here, maybe, huh? Yeah, I won't be able to go to Sparkle Market anymore. No, no. more Sparkle Market okay. for you. No. <laughs> There's no reason to live now. Yeah. <laughs> Between Sparkle Market and Dairy Queen, where Coupon lives. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be guilty of something, I guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> One good thing about hanging around with these guys makes me feel so normal. <laughs> <laughs> Different. <laughs> normal is only sitting on a washing machine. <laughs> Well, at least I'll talk to Washington, Michigan. All right, well, with all of that, I guess we're about ready to get started. Is it hot in here? I guess so. How many would like to turn the air a little lower? A little bit. Just a little bit. A little bit. Just a hair. Drop it down about three or four. A hair. A hair. A hair. Who wants to put that around? It's still a hair. We'll measure three or four. Before we get started, I just wanted to show you this very quickly. Uh, this is an article out of uh, Ports News. It shows you that the the father of uh, Mateen, the shooter there in Orlando, how this guy has been meeting on a regular basis going in to Hillary Clinton's office when she was Secretary of State. He was, he was there on a regular basis. There you go, folks. But anyway, well, he's, 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 they're, they're both registered Democrats. Yeah. There he is. All of the terrorists. Yeah, Virtually yeah. just about yeah, all the terrorists. You want to stop gun violence, you take, uh, you know, they're, they're, all, they're all Democrats. So you take the guns out of Democrats' hands, you don't have the, the problem in your hands. Okay. You want to show that video, or are you going to wait? You want to? Well, let's let's show it after. How many of you fathers want to see something that'll make you really feel good for Father's Day? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Go ahead and show it, and we'll. This will make you kind of cheer you up. Okay. Here you go. Get ready. This will cheer you all up. <laughs> And implicitly, implicitly, Senator Sanders for New York's gun violence. No, of course not. Of course not. This is a this is a serious difference between us. And what I want to start by saying, it's not a laughing matter. Ninety people on average a day are killed. <laughs> There's several places that I've seen on uh, YouTube that uh, definitely uh, suggest that uh, Hillary and Obama are, were in cahoots about uh, starting ISIS and supplying them with weapons. Guess, guess who's been saying that since for the last eight years, you know? All right. Yeah. Okay. That's the print? That's why they're covering up, wanting to cover up all those emails. Yeah. I've got Trump's people calling me now. Good. I think they were a little upset with me having Daryl Castle out here. And by the way, if you folks have missed it, you really missed a good presentation. He came out, this guy's a really good constitutional lawyer. And uh, he's on, I mean, 25 states now he's on the ballot? 28 states. Uh, so the only one that's excluded from uh, Texas is already closed. So their ballot there. Right. There's no reason for anybody to stay home. If you say you can't vote for Trump, I can understand. Uh, and of course, you can't vote for Hillary. But uh, but here's a guy that gives you an alternative. He stands for everything we stand for, believes in everything we believe in. It's got until about August, about the middle of August, August 15th or so, yeah. to get signatures for ballot access. And he had, uh, he had a lot of Bible questions. He was just... Tickle pink that I was helping him, you know, and I'm showing him some things in the Bible where it comes to, you know, the kind of people that we're supposed, the Bible says that we're supposed to vote for, and uh, when I showed him that, he was just, well, he wrote down everything, he was beside himself. He, so. Anyhow, with that, let's get started.
Good morning. We are coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 14781 Sperry Road, Newberry, Ohio. I'm radio pastor Ernie Sanders. And the title of the message this morning is The Fatherhood of God. You're listening to us this morning on the Liberty Works Radio Network. That is the 104.3 FM, the Eagle in Tampa and Ocala. And we start today in Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if through the Spirit ye do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father! The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if the children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, we shall also be glorified together. Now, Abba is in the Hebrew, it's a Hebrew word for father. And it's an interesting thing because bar is the Hebrew word for son. And one of the things old Peter Ruckman used to remind people of now and then, is that Barabbas, Barabbas, means uh, son of the father. And so here uh, we have the son, capital S-O-N, Lord Jesus Christ, died in the place of the son, small s, of the father. And this is, what an interesting thing that Christ took the place of the cross of Barabbas. And one is the Son, and the other is the Son of the Father. Anyhow, if you turn over to Luke, Luke chapter 3, we read this, just verse 38. Which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. And here it's an interesting thing because uh, we see that Adam was the son of God, who was the son of God, uh, who, who was the son of the son of God. Christ created Adam in the image of God, Genesis 1.26. So here you have... The Son of God, or God the Son, if you will, creating Adam, the Son of God. Now the Bible is just filled with these things where he's showing you uh, in so many different ways where we as <coughs> believers are heir to the throne of glory. And then, if you turn over to Isaiah chapter 9, in Isaiah chapter 9 now, how often uh, do we hear Catholics often is referred to as Mary, the mother of God? Now, the reality is that Mary is the daughter of Christ. So can Mary truly be the mother of her father? <coughs> Sounds a little strange, doesn't it? Okay. But the answer to that actually is in Luke 137. And we'll read that later. But let's read here in verse 6, Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be the, called the Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David, and upon the kingdom, order, and establish it with judgment, and with justice for his forth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now again, it's an interesting thing how Christ is all-inclusive in everything. Uh, he, you, you find that the Bible teaches that in Christ you find the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And yet, here he says this, that he is the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. And it's interesting, so when, often when I hear Catholics talking about Mary, the mother of God. We say,
see, God didn't have a mother. The Christ child, the Christ child, okay, was born of Mary. But that same child, in eons, in ages past, that same child who was who existed, who came came into this world, became a flesh, became a child, was eternal, pre-existed. And he literally was her creator. And yet, you hardly ever have here the Roman Catholics, of course, most of them, they're, they're not, they're not really <coughs> biblically literate. And they don't really understand that God did not have a mother. God is pre-existent. The Christ child came in through Mary. And if we, we go into Luke chapter 1, and in Luke chapter 1, starting with verse 26, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled and had his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth the Son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign forever, reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So now, here it's an interesting thing as we continue. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing as I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For God, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And that answers that question that we asked earlier. Could and would, would it be possible that Mary could be the mother of her father? God has no grandchildren, right? And here we just saw the Lord Jesus Christ as Father God. And she spake with a loud voice and said, Blessed are thou amongst women, blessed is the fruit of the womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of thy Lord shall come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped to my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told of her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imaginations of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted a low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich hath he sent empty away. He hath hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. Now, uh, some years ago, there was a woman, a pro-lifer, and she was very faithful in her pro-life ministry. 
And friend Sandy, I think, remember very well. But she was uh, an excessive, an excessive Mary worshiper. She would often say that uh, that none of us, she would often say that none of us would be here today had Mary chose uh, to abort Jesus.